Good day, everybody. How are we doing? This is Dr. Nandi. Today, we are going to talk about section chapter three. So first, we will do section 3.1. So without further ado, I'll share my screen with you. Measures of center. Today we are going to talk about measures of center. So these are the objectives. Compute the mean of a data set. So the mean of a data set is the measure of the center. If we imagine each data value to be a weight, then the mean is the point at which the data set balances. So we have five numbers, 68, 78, 83, 85, 92. So we will put, uh, we draw a number line from 65 to 95. Remember 68 is the lowest value. So we uh, stretch it a little be, uh, below 68 to 65 on the left. And on the right, the maximum value is 92. So we stretch the number line to 95, slightly above 92. And then the mean comes out as 81.2 arithmetic mean, which uh, basically balances uh, the data set. That means the fulcrum neither goes up nor down at 81.2. Uh, recall that a population uh, consists of an entire collection of individuals which from which about which information is sought and a sample consists of a smaller group from the population. The method for calculating the mean is same for both the samples and population. However, the notation is different. So whenever we are looking into a population characteristic, such as population mean, we will use a Greek symbol. Um, so you see a Greek symbol, it is small m in Greek language. That's why it is there, small m. The uh, first letter in mean is also m, therefore the Greek small m, which is uh, written as that, basically a small u with a tail in the front. And this is called a mu. So that is Greek m and its population mean. And sample mean is indicated by X with a line on the top called X bar. So a list of N numbers is denoted by X1, X2 up to Xn. And this is a Greek symbol in front of X in the second line. That Greek symbol is Greek capital S called Sigma. Whenever we see it in uh, statistics, it means we are adding up. So we are adding up or summing all the numbers. So sigma xi means sum of the numbers, which is x1 to x2, x3, and xn, up to xn. The sample mean formula is given by x bar, sum of xi divided by small n. n is the number of numbers. And the population mean is given by mu or Greek small m which is sum of the numbers divided by population size. <coughs> so we, we have uh, three number, uh, five numbers, 78, 83, 92, 68, and 85. Find the mean. I will show you how to do it by the calculator. So first we'll put the calculator on. Then we will pre the, press the second button. Then plus on top of enter on the extreme right corner. Then we will select number four. So second, then plus on top of enter, then number four. And we get clear all list on the calculator screen. Hit enter button. Okay, it says done. That means I have cleared all the memories of the calculator. I'm ready to enter the data in the calculator now. I press the stat button, which is in the second row, stat button, and then select number one, which is edit. When I do that, I have a list, several lists open up in front of me. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, these are all lists. So I will enter this data set in L1. I will put the cursor, which is the black rectangle on the first line in L1 and enter the values in L1. So I'll type the first number seven and eight and then hit enter. So from the cursor moves from the first line to the second line where I will enter 83, then again enter. Cursor move to the third line, 92, and enter, and then 68, and enter, then 85, and enter. 
So I've entered the five data points in L1. Now I'm ready to calculate the mean. So I'll press the stat button again in the second row. Remember, second row is stat button. Stat button. Then I will highlight with the right cursor key. This is the right cursor key. Calc. I'll move the cursor on the top line into calc. And then I will select number one, which is number one. Okay, so my cursor is already on one, which is one where stats, and I will type number one on my calculator screen, one, one. Okay, so I get one where stats. My first line list is L1 because I've entered the data in L1. My second line, FREQ list, I see something in my calculator. I don't want anything there because I have not entered any data in L2, L3, anywhere. So I want to clear whatever I see in second line, if I see at all anything. In my calculator, I see L2, I have to clear it. So I'll press the clear button on the third row. Here is a clear button. So my L2 frequency list is now empty. Frequency list colon, and it's empty. Then I move to cursor down by the down arrow key to calculate and hit enter. And the first line is the mean X bar, sample mean is 81.2. Note that the mean is rounded to one more decimal place than the original data. This is generally considered good practice. It is often impossible to compute a population mean because we don't know all the values of the population. Instead, we draw a sample and use the sample mean as an estimate. That is, X bar is an often used to estimate mu. X bar is a sample mean is often used to estimate population mean. Sample means usually either overestimate or underestimate the population mean. Okay. There are 440 players in the National Basketball Association during a recent season. The population mean height was mu 79.2. The samples of five players were selected as follows. So, you have the first sample, five numbers, and their mean is 80.2. Second sample, five numbers, their mean is 78. Okay, remember the population mean is 79.2. The first mean is overestimating it. The second sample is underestimating it. The first sample mean 80.2 overestimates the population mean of 79.2, while the second sample mean 78 underestimates it. These two samples were small. Means of larger samples tend to be closer to population mean because these sample sizes were five, they're mean, they're saying means of larger samples. That is, if the sample size is large, then the, the mean of the sample will tend to be close to the population mean. The larger the sample, the most likely it is the sample mean is close to the population mean. Some people that the mean represents a typical value, data value. In fact, the mean may be a value could be that could not possibly appear in the data set. So consider the mean of the five exam scores. The average is 81.2. If like most exams, the scores are always whole numbers, then 81.2 is not a typical data value. What they're saying here that the mean did not be a particular value in the data set. Compute the median. What is the median? Is the 50th percentile. The median is another measure of the center. The median is a number that splits the ordered data set. Ordered data set means arranged from lowest to the highest in half, so that the half the data value are less than the median and half the data value is greater than the median. The procedure for computing the median differs depending on whether the number of observations in the data set is even or old. If n is odd, the median is the middle number. If n is even, the median is the average of the two middle numbers. We have to arrange the numbers lowest to the highest. Fortunately for us, we know we have entered the data in L1. We can find the median uh, by one where stats, same. So we have the numbers in our calculator screen. We'll just scroll down with the down arrow key, okay? When we scroll down, just press the down arrow key one more, one time and you'll get median as 83. What does it mean? 50% of the numbers are below 83, 50% above 83. Okay. Uh, here, um, there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. So, sample size is even. 
So in an odd data set, the median is a number in the middle when the numbers are arranged from lowest to the highest, not in the even numbers. Let's do it by calculator. So the first thing I will do is second, press the second button on the top left corner, then plus on top of enter, then number four. Second, plus on top of enter, then number four. I get clear all list on my calculator screen. Hit enter, done. That means the memory has been cleared. Now I press the stat button and then one. Okay, so my list L1 is empty where I will enter the numbers in the top row, 20 in L1, then 15, then 12, then 27, then 13, then 19, then 13, then 21. So I've entered all the data set in L1. Now I need to find the median. So again, remember stat, then highlight by the right cursor key, calc on the top row, then select number one, which is one where stats. My first line list is L1. My second line should be empty because I've not entered anything in L2. And I go directly to calculate and hit enter. I get the mean as 17.5. And I scroll down with the down arrow key to get the median. Median is 17. Median is 17. Okay. Just like what they have done here. So they are showing how to do it by calculator, which I have explained to you. Compare the properties of mean and median. Both mean and median are frequently used as measures of center. One important difference is the mean is more influenced by extreme values than median. A statistic is resistant if its value is not affected much by extreme values, large or small in the data set. The median is resistant, but the mean is not. Okay, so they're showing an example to show you, giving an example to show you that the median is influenced by presence of large number, okay? So we have uh, these numbers. So again, I can clear the memory of the calculator. Second, then plus on top of enter, then number four, clear all list on the calculator screen, hit enter, done, then stat, one. And I will enter these numbers, 25,000, 31,000, 31,000, number of three zeros, then 34,000, then uh, 44,000, and then 56,000. Okay, then stat, highlight calc on the top row, then number one, one where stats, list is L1, calculate. Let's see. The mean is 38,000 and the median is 34,000. Now, suppose one of these families win a um, lottery of uh, uh, 1 million, not one particular, the people who are making the lowest salary, 25,000, they win a lottery of $1 million. So now their salary become, earning become 1,025,000. Let's redo the calculation. So stat, then calc, then number one, list is, uh, so no, before that we do stat and then one, edit, okay? So the 25,000 has to be changed to 1 million 25,000. So 1 million, one zero, two five zero zero zero. So one zero two five zero 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 is the change uh, uh, in income of the first family, okay? And the rest of the numbers are the same, okay? Now we do stat, calc, one, list is L1, calculate. Notice the mean, the first line, sample mean is 238,000. So the mean has shifted from 38,000 to 238,000, a change of $200,000. Why? Because suddenly the first family had uh, uh, 
won a lottery ticket of 1 million. So the mean has been pulled towards a large number, 1,025,000, which is now the earning of the first family. What about the median? Median is only 44,000. That change, it was initially 34,000, now it is 44,000, shift of only 10,000. The extreme million, uh, value of 1,025,000 influences the mean quite a lot, increasing it from 38,000 to 238,000. In comparison, the median has been influenced much less, increasing from 34,000 to 44,000. That is, the median is resistant. Okay. So well, now we are looking at the shape of our data set. The data is on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, which is not shown in this picture, is relative frequency or probability. Okay, so the, on the top, we have the bell-shaped distribution. Look, it looks like an inverted U. The me, at the uh, center where the peak is the highest, or the relative frequency is highest. On the horizontal axis, mean is equal to median. This type of data is called symmetric because left half of the curve, if you draw an imaginary vertical line at the center where the peak is the highest, the left half of the curve is equal to the right half of the curve. So it is called symmetric distribution. Okay, so here mean is equal to the median. When the data set is skewed to the right, when is it skewed to the right? When you have very large number, the mean will be pulled towards the larger number. Mean will be greater than the median. So if the data set is positively skewed, or skewed to the right, mean will be greater than the median. The reason being mean is pulled towards a larger number. When the data set is skewed to the left, that is there are many small numbers, mean will be pulled towards the lower numbers. So mean will be less than the uh, median. So when it is skewed to the right, it's called positively skewed. When it is skewed to the left, it is called skew uh, negatively skewed. In a positively skewed, mean is greater than the median. In the negatively skewed, mean is less than the median. Which is a better measure of the center? Which is a better the mean or the median? The short answer is neither one is better than the other. They both measure the center in different but appropriate ways. The features of mean and median are summarized below. Mean takes every value into account, highly influenced by extreme values. Median, not much influenced by extreme values. It's resistant, depends on middle value or two middle values. Compute the mean and median of the following sample. So again, second button, then plus on top of enter, then number four, clear all list on the calculator screen. Remember, you have to hit enter after this. So done. That means we have cleared the memory of the calculator. Then we press start button. And then number one, remember one is edit. Okay, we will enter the data set in L1. We type each number and hit enter. 69, enter. 17, enter. 75, enter. 96, enter. 74, enter. 80, enter. Now we press stat button, then calc. Stat, highlight calc. Then number one, which is one where stats list is L1 and we calculate. We are looking for the mean and the median. The mean is 68.5 and the median is 74.5. Mean is less than the median. That means this data set is skewed to the left, negatively skewed. Someone surveys the families in a certain town and reports that the mean number of children in a family is 2.1. Someone else says that this must be wrong because it is impossible for a family to have 2.1 children. Is this correct? A mean of 2.1 children is not necessarily wrong because me, uh, the mean does not have to be a value in the data set. But in all practical purpose, probably 2.1 will be rounded down to two children. In each case, decide whether you'd expect the data set to be skewed to the right, skewed to the left, or approximately symmetric. First one, mean is six, median is four. Mean is greater than the median, skewed to the right, okay? Second one, mean is five, median is seven. Mean is less than the median, skewed to the left. Third one, mean is eight, median is 8.1. They're approximately the same. Therefore, they're approx the data set is approximately symmetric. Same for the last one, mean is four, median is 3.8, they're close enough. So it's approximately symmetric.
Uh, following is the information about the five starting players on a collection basketball, their heights in inches, their uniform numbers. Yes, the mean and median height are meaningful because heights are measurements. Will we obtain uh, meaningful information by computing the mean and median uniform number? No. Well, the mean and median un uniform numbers are not meaningful because these numbers are just labels and do not measure anything. Find the mode of a data set. A value that is sometimes classified as a measure of center is the mode. The mode of the data set is the value that appears most frequently. If two or more values are tied for the most frequent, they all considered to be modes. If the values all have the same frequency, we say the data set has no mode. That means if each number appears only once, we said there is no mode in the data set. We never say there is zero mode. So they give us an example, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 6. It appears that 1 appears the maximum number of time, therefore 1 is the mode. But if is mode a measure of the center, the mode is sometimes classified as a measure of center. However, this isn't really accurate. The mode can be the largest value in the data set, one of the largest values as shown in the picture or diagram, or the smallest or anywhere in between. So what is the takeaway? The mode may not represent the measure center of the data set. Means and medians can be computed only for quantitative data. Mode can be computed for qualitative data as well. So here, mode is the category of car that appears the maximum number of times, which is Toyota. So mode can be calculated for qualitative data. Remember, these are categories of cars, therefore this is qualitative data. However, we can still calculate mode on this data set. Approximate the mean using grouped data set. Okay. So, first we have to calculate the midpoint of each class. These are groups of data. 0 to 49 is the first group, 50 to 99 is the second group, 100 to 149 is the third group, and so forth. That is in the first column. Frequency, how many numbers are between 0 and 49 in the data set? 10. How many counts? Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, who's this? I'm uh, not interested. Okay, so <clears throat> 0 to 49, 50 to 99, 100 to 149, 150 to 199, 200 to 249, 250 to 299, these groups. So first we have to find the midpoint of these groups. So uh, midpoint is definitely not, the first class is not 0 plus 49 divided by 2. Midpoint stands for middle point. So it is 0 to 49, we do not add 0 plus 49 and divide by 2. Instead, we add 0 plus 50 which is 50 and divided by 2, 25. So 25 is the midpoint of the first class. Similarly, the midpoint of the second class is 50 to 100. So 50 plus 100 is 150 divided by 2 is 75. Okay, so here are the class midpoints. So notice the midpoints are separated by 50, which is a class width. 50 minus 0 is 50 is the class width. Okay, so 25, 75, 125, 175, 225, and 275 are the midpoints. Corresponding frequency in the third column. We will use our calculator to calculate the mean of group data. How will we do it? First, put the calculator on, press the second button, then plus on top of enter, then number four. Clear all list on the calculator, then hit enter. Okay, done. Then press stat and one, edit button. So in L1, we are going to enter the midpoints, 25, then 75, 
then 125, then 175, then 225, then 275. Okay. Now you press the right cursor key. Right cursor key is in the top right corner. This will move the cursor in the top line in L2. Okay. Right cursor key moves the cursor to the top line in L2 after you have finished entering the data set in L1. Okay. So, uh, so here in L2, we are going to enter the frequency 10, then 5, then 13, then 11, then 7, then 4. Okay. So now we are going to calculate the uh, mean of this data set. Okay, so stat, calc, stat, calc, highlight calc in the top row, then again select number one, which is one where stats. Now the first line is L1, but in the second line, which is FREQ list, frequency list, you're going to put L2 after the colon. How do you do that? Press the second button on the top left corner and then number two, second and two, put L2 in the second line after frequency list, colon. And then you bring the cursor down on calculate and hit enter. So your mean is 137. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Compute a weighted mean. A weighted mean is a mean in which uh, some numbers count more than others. To compute a weighted mean, we assign a positive number called a weight to each number with the numbers that count more getting larger weights. If x1, x2, dash, 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 xn are data values and w1, w2, is dash, 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 wn are the weights, the weighted mean is given by the formula. You take the weight of each data point and multiply it by multiply by the number. So x1 multiplied by w1, x2 multiplied by w2, so forth. You add all these products up to wn, xn, and then divide by the sum of the weights. So <clears throat> Joe took a four semester course. He got an A in statistics, okay, five credits, a B in psychology, uh, four credits, and C in English, three credits, and an A in music, two credits. And A is worth four quality points, B is the uh, worth three quality points, and C is worth two points. Compute Joe's GPA. Again, we will use the calculator, second, plus on top of enter, number four, clear all list on the calculator, hit enter, done. Stat, one. Okay, here the weights are the uh, credits, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> so he got five. Uh, so the weights are the cr uh, credits and the quality points that he or she got are in the uh, X1, X2, X3, etc. So the weights are the credits. They will go in L2 and the uh, quality points they got A, B, C, etc. will go in L1. Okay, so he got an A in statistics. A is four quality points. He got a B in psychology. Okay, three. Okay, B is three quality points. C in English. C is what? Two quality points. Two in A. Okay, English. And then A in music, again, four. Okay. Now we go to the top of L2, where we have to put the credit hours. So he got A in statistics, which is worth five credits. So five is the first number in L2. Next one uh, is B in psychology. Psychology is four credits. So put four there. And then... He got C in English, which is three credits. And then he got um, A in music, which is what, two credits, okay? So again, the quality points, A being four, B being three, C being two, and uh, if it had there, D, D would be one, 
Okay, so these are the quality points. These are in L1, in L2 are the credit hours. In this case, five, four, three, and two. Okay, then we press the stat button, calc, highlight calc on the top row. One list is L1, frequency list is L2, and we calculate. And his GPA is 3.285 or 3.29 rounded off, okay? So I will stop here today. If you have any question, please write me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'm coming back next time with section 3.2. So take care, have a nice day, see you.